Now that you've had a chance to practice the electron configurations and orbital diagrams, there are, as usual, some rule breakers. I'd like to introduce to you two. Two rule breakers, chromium and copper, and have us talk about why they are um, exceptional electron configurations. There are others, my friends, but these are the two that the AP board asks us to know. Therefore, I say memorize. Exceptional electron configurations of chromium and copper. In other words, they're going to be rule breakers. Let's take a peek at why they break the rule filling their D sublevel and leaving their 4S partially filled. We'll write them into our note packs. So my note pack is opened up here to page 5 where the top of the page says exceptional electron configurations. Perhaps what I'd like to do is uh, use some scrap paper and that way I can write larger than the room given to me in my note pack. Let's take a look at chromium first. Now chromium is a transition metal. Chromium is number 24 on our periodic table. So we have 24 electrons to write for. Let me, as we should, start out in the um, follow the rules. If we were to follow the rules for writing chromium, here's what it would look like. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, let me count, 2 and 2 is 4, 6 gets me to 10, 11, 12, 18, 19, 20. After the 4s, we begin to fill the 3d. We have 4 to place into that 3d sublevel. And remember, 2, 2 is 8, 10, 12, 18, 20, 24. So the superscripts do indeed count for all 24 electrons. If I think about, um, and I would just call this, these are known as the core electrons, more coming on that. The ones that are of interest to a chemist are known as the valence electrons the outermost electrons that are available for bonding. So the 4s2 3d4 electron arrangement if it had followed the rules, but we see that they're breaking the rules and let's explain why. This 4s sublevel places two electrons in it. The d sublevel now, you know what? I just occurred to me, earlier lessons I were drawing boxes and uh, now I am drawing circles. That's simply because that's the way I grew up drawing orbital diagrams. My teacher showed me to draw circles. Our text uses boxes. Some people actually use just dashed lines and I've seen them in all different ways. So whatever you're comfortable doing, sometimes I, I fall back into an old pattern and draw circles. We place one electron into each orbital first. This would be the way had we followed the rules. But since chromium is a rule breaker, this is actually why. This is like saying in the fourth uh, energy level, the S sublevel containing two electrons, yet there's an empty electron orbital down here at the end of the row. It's like making two siblings share a bedroom when there's an empty bedroom down the lane. What it actually will do is promote one to fill the orbital. So instead of having 4s2, 3d4, we correct it. 4s1, 3d5 is the exceptional electron configuration of chromium. Promoting that electron from the 4s out to the empty orbital, 3d. And like we said, the reason it wants to do that is it's just actually a more stable configuration, spreading out the electrons, taking advantage of the empty orbital. The other element we're asked to know is called copper. A very similar reason. Copper, who is number 29 on our periodic table, will have an exceptional configuration as well. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. We would write it 4s2, 3d9, and that's going to give us the 29 electrons. 
Thinking about uh, the arrangement here, here's the 2 and the 4s. The 5 equal energy levels for the d. Placing 1 into each orbital first, going back and giving a partner. Copper, if it followed the rules, would look like this. But we're being told in its exceptional configuration, it also promotes one of its electrons to complete the d orbital, fill all of those up, leaving just one in the 4s energy level. The correct configuration for copper would be 4s1, 3d10. The correct configuration for chromium, 4s1, 3d5. And again, there are more exceptions, but these are the two that the AP board asks us to know, chromium and copper.